What is the goal of using an established diagnostic strategy for all diagnosis situations? The computerized systems of today's cars require an organized diagnostic approach to discover any problems that may occur. Sometimes a problem in one system can affect another system in ways that were not possible before computer multiplexing became the norm. Therefore, the modern automobile requires an integrated approach to effectively diagnose these complex systems. In essence, we need to look at the whole car to efficiently trace a problem. We are going to perform this diagnostic process from start to finish with an explanation of the steps that should be followed in a best practices strategy. First, we will perform step one, understand the problem. Then, step two, perform a visual inspection, operational checks, looking for any clues. Then, step three, perform the vehicle system check, including a scan test. And step four, check for related bulletins or service information, and according to the system check results, choose a corresponding step five. Either A, perform diagnosis for a current DTC, B. Perform diagnosis for an intermittent or history DTC. C. Perform a diagnosis for a symptom with no DTC. Or D. There is no published diagnostic for this concern. Then we will move to step 6. Perform the necessary repair. And then step 7. Verify the fix. Is the problem completely resolved? If the answer is no, we will return to step 1. If the answer is yes, then we'll move to step 8. The procedure is complete. Step 1. Understand the problem. Question the driver if necessary to get the whole story. Do you really understand the owner's problem? Then review the available service information to distinguish normal system operation. It is possible that the owner misunderstands the operation of the system. In doing so, you are verifying that there is actually a concern. In step two, we will do a careful visual inspection. It is a good idea to inspect the battery charge and condition. Then, look for any disconnected or misrouted wires or hoses. You may also look for any broken or misinstalled parts. We can start and run the engine to see if it is running properly. This engine is not. We can also see that the check engine light is on, so we know there's a problem. Now we will perform step three, a vehicle system check, including scan test. We'll scan all modules for diagnostic trouble codes. And we can see that the PCM has a trouble code. None of the rest of the modules have any codes stored. So from here, we'll go and look and see what code is stored in the PCM. And we can see that there's a P0300 engine misfire detected. We can also see that the MIL has been requested, so that's the reason for our check engine light being on. So now we'll go and we'll capture the trouble code information onto the scanner so that if more codes are induced during testing, we'll have a record of the original failure. Step 4. Check for related service information using whatever information system is available to you. 
There may be bulletins, recalls, or engineering information related to codes or symptoms. Choose the next step based on the findings of Step 4. We can follow Step 5A on this vehicle and follow a flowchart as there is a current P0300 misfire code set. If we had a history code set and not a current code, then we should review the code's diagnostic aids to find the problem. If there was no code set, then we would have to diagnose by the symptom. We can match the symptom to the published process to follow. If there were no diagnostic trouble codes set and no published diagnostic for the symptoms, then we must analyze the problem and develop a unique diagnosis. This is the most challenging situation in automotive diagnosis. This is when technical knowledge is combined with published diagnostics. In step 6, we will do the necessary repair. In this case, it is a spark plug replacement. The spark plug was worn and needed replacing. That was the cause of our misfire and service engine soon late. It should be noted to always use professional methods and procedures. Now let's verify that the problem is completely fixed. We can see that the engine is running just fine now. With the engine running, there is no longer a check engine light on. And we can see that there are no trouble codes set. If the problem was not completely resolved, we would need to follow the chart back up to step number one and re-examine the concern. If the problem is verified to be fixed, then we are done. I recommend following this process for each and every diagnosis and find that consistent results are my reward.